Hello and welcome to the next video. Uh, this use case I'm going to show you is taking model data, which in this case is mostly going to come from OPC UA, and how to log that to SQL and auto create the tables. We've had a lot of SQL functionality that makes uh, logging to SQL pretty, pretty cool. Uh, so this is Hybyte. I've got it again running in a Docker image, and this is the, the command uh, console output. And I'm going to start from scratch. Uh, and kind of show you how to do this. But essentially, I've got a SQL server over here, and I'm going to create a table based on our model, which we'll create. And then I'm going to create some inputs. I'll do mostly OPC UA, but again, the inputs could come from REST, any input supported by uh, Hybyte. So the first thing we'll do is let's create an OPC server input. So this is kind of a twist on traditional OPC data logging. Uh, we think we, we kind of have a, I, I think we have a better way to do it. So I'm going to grab OPC UA, and I've got a server locally. I've got kept server uh, installed. So uh, again, my addresses are going to look a little different than yours because I'm running on Docker. So just bear that in mind. Uh, 49.320 is my endpoint. I'm going to connect anonymously, although 1.4 does support uh, encryption and username and password, so you don't necessarily need to do this now, but uh, for simplicity, I'll do it. All right, so I've got that, and now I've created my OPC server. The first thing you want to do is test that connection, so I'm going to create an input. Uh, oops, actually go back to details and inputs. I'm going to browse, and this is a way to see I'm connected, and I actually have data that came, comes back from the browse tree, so I know that uh, my connection is working. If this failed to browse, what I would do then is I would open up uh, the console window and look for specific error messages uh, to see if I could troubleshoot the issue. All right, so let's just pull in some tags. So this is a press machine example, but I'm, I'm importing all those tags and now they're inputs off the OPC UA connection. So let's go create a data model um, around this. So I'm going to call this press machine. And uh, if I can remember the time, I'm going to bring up another window just so I remember the tags I brought in. Because they're pretty much going to model them. Cycle count, cycle time, max PSI, min set. Uh, so I'll do cycle time, cycle count, Max PSI, min PSI, then set PSI. And I could change, uh, again, the data types on here to be explicit. Any type just means I'm going to take it from the source, so whatever data type it is in the OPC UA server. I'll make none of these required, but if I want it to be rigorous, I can make these required as well. And I'm going to submit that. And the, now I'm going to create an instance of this. So all of my press machines use this model. I'm going to create an instance of this model to represent a single press machine. Just call it uh, the default name. But anyway, let me grab the input. So now you can see these inputs are available. And oops. And I've got them slightly mixed up, but we'll fix that. So I'll just drag these over. Now I'm mapping the tags to the instance is essentially what I'm doing. So now I've got an instance. I've got a model press machine with these attributes. I have an instance, which I'm going to rename press, mach uh, press machine one. Now what I want to do is log this into SQL. So I'm going to take the OBC UA data, provide a context, and then get it in a SQL database because that's my integration point with Tableau or where Azure SQL, whatever uh, the end destination is. So now I'm going to create uh, my SQL connection. I'm going to use SQL Server, but this would work with Postgres or MySQL. Uh, again, I'm going to use the weird host.docker.internal database. My database name is test. Okay. Now, to test my SQL input really quick, I'm just going to create an input and do object explorer. And if that works, I see the tables that are available. So that's, that's awesome. That means I'm connected and working. I'm going to call this press out. And here I can either name the table or the stored procedure that I'm going to send the data to. Uh, so in this case, I'm going to send it to a table. I'll call it press out test. Now this table does not exist. So if I were to bring this up, you know, there is no press machine out test in here. 
although there's something similar, but not, not quite it. So this will be a new table. And I'll submit that. But what I want to do is I want Highbyte to create that table for me. Kind of save me the time. So I'm going to enable that option. And the very last thing to do is to go create a flow. Uh, we're going to call this OPC Press to SQL. And uh, we're going to grab our instance, which is our model data. And we might have Press Machine 2, 3, 4. We'd add those in. right? And then my output, which is the SQL Server. And I'll back this off to five seconds. Uh, and I'm this is really simple triggering. I'm just going to, every five seconds, uh, go read the tags and then pump that into the SQL Server. I'll go to Flows, and I'm going to turn that on. And what I'll do quick is I'll jump here. Uh, looks like I might have had some failed reads in the first. Uh, but let's see. I'm going to go Refresh and... Hopefully what happens is we see press out. That's the table that we named. And if we do a select, you can see the model data is now landing in the table. So this is the data model we defined with an automa auto automa automatically indexing uh, IDs that's added for us. And then the timestamp, which is an epoch, and then the instance name. Right, so pretty cool. Uh, and then we've auto-created that table. Now, if I wanted to go do something like, uh, I've got that model, right? I want to create a second instance. Uh, well, let's jump over because it's not very interesting if we just bring in the same tags. So let's create a browse and grab in some new inputs. Um, and th this is not, I'm just going to grab some random, random tags. But what I want to show you is that I can create a new instance called Press Machine 2. And just like before, now I can map over tags. And again, this mapping is not going to make uh, exact sense. But to prove the point of now in my flow, uh, I'm going to grab the other instance. right? And now I'm going to pipe both instances. And I'll turn the flow back on. And what you'll see is multiple instances ending up in the table. Right, so this is a way, this isn't logging OPC tags, this is logging your structured models into SQL really easily, right? And I could, Postgres, MySQL would work the same way. I could add I could add outputs, I could have a primary database and a second database that I push to both of them, and you name it. So it's pretty it's pretty easy. Now let me show you one other feature. What I'm going to go in do now, to do now is create a second output. I'm going to call this press out JSON. Uh, JSON. And I'm going to also create the table, but I'm going to log as JSON. So I'm going to take our default JSON payload for that object, and I'm going to dump it to SQL, and I'll show you what that looks like. And again, I could do all this in the same flow. I could create a separate flow if I had different timing or triggers that I wanted to use, but for the sake of simplicity, I'm just going to wire it all up in the same one. Turn it on. And we're going to go back and refresh. You can see, and I have a new JSON table, and if I select that, it's a JSON payload of the actual data, right? It would be the same as if we sent it over REST or MQTT, uh, and then the timestamp and the instance name are also included, just like in the ID field. So pretty slick, right? The other thing this can do, which I won't, I won't do a full demo of here. It's a little harder to show, but what I can do in the outputs is instead of calling these um, these tables. Right, if I turn off the create table, it'll use an existing table. But I could call a stored procedure. And what Highbyte will do is if you enable log to JSON, it'll call the stored procedure with the same arguments, a JSON parameter, which is a varchar, timestamp, and name. And it'll pass those into the stored procedure so you could code against that and do your own thing on the SQL side. You could also uh, not pass it as JSON, and it would pass the name parameters uh, just like this, right? So each one of these columns would be a name parameter passed to the stored procedure. And it's pretty intelligent in matching. So as an example, if I went in, and in real time, um, let's do a design. If I dropped, say I don't want the time, name and timestamp for whatever reason, or some other column that uh, Highbyte had added, 
I'll just save that in real time, right? That I dropped that from the database. And what you'll see is we'll continue to log to that database. Make sure, it looks like the flow might have stopped or I stopped the flow. So if I turn this flow back on, it's not gonna produce an error. It'll continue, it'll continue to log um, to that database. It just won't include those columns because they're no longer there, right? So you'll continue to, to do the logs, but uh, new columns won't be present. So every five seconds, this will drop a new, a new data point. And you know, this is just through the model. So in the instances, I've only used OPC UA data, but I could use other SQL data. I could use data from a CSV file. I could use it from a REST interface, you name it. Uh, so hopefully that gets you thinking of logging. Uh, the other one last thing is it supports store and forward, right? So if I wanted to enable store and forward, I would turn this on and I could say, you know, log up to a thousand write entries. That'd be rows in this case. Uh, and it will, if the connection to SQL goes down, those will be stored locally and then they'll be sent as soon as it comes back up. So it's easy to, to add that reliability in as well. So hopefully it gets that, that gets you thinking about SQL logging. Uh, it's pretty slick. Uh, give it a shot and let us know if you have any questions.